Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escoffier Online. And today we're going to be talking about dessert sauces and decorating plates for, with um, dessert sauces. And these are pretty much for um, individual desserts like restaurant quality desserts. And I'm gonna show you some tips that you can use at home or you can use in a professional kitchen when you work someday. And at the end of our show, we're gonna do the drawing for the top four for the um, winners of the uh, $100 gift certificate for the Escoffier online store. And um, we're gonna draw names and um, it's gonna be lots of fun. And then we're gonna talk about the next contest. So knowing all that, let's get started. So I've got my sauces and my squeeze bottles. These are super easy to find available in most stores. And um, I picked five different kinds. I've got caramel chocolate, vanilla, vanilla beans, the creme anglaise, I've got apricot, and I have raspberry. So it's a nice um, combination of flavors to work with today and a nice variety of colors too. So keep that in mind when you're doing your plates to um, make them a little colorful. And with your sauces, you're going to want them to always be the right consistency. You don't want them to be too thick where they're um, holding their shape too much and you don't want them to be too loose where they're gonna run all over the plate. So suggestion from me would be if you're unsure, a little thicker rather than a little thinner. It's easier to work with and you can always thin it down. So back to the squeeze bottles. Like I said, these are easy to find. They come with these um, little caps with the covers on them. And um, when you're finished with your squeeze bottles, if you're working in a restaurant, maybe in the pantry, plating desserts all night, you're gonna wanna take off these tops and wash them every night. It's important that you keep these really clean because they can collect debris from the sauce or from the dessert if you're in a hurry and you accidentally touch the dessert. So um, keep these super clean and it's gonna keep your sauce more healthy. And another tip I wanted to mention too is um, these are new squeeze bottles bottles that I have. And the tips are nice and small, and that's going to be good for us today because we're going to be showing some finer things. But if you're in a commercial kitchen and you're plating a lot of desserts, a big banquet party, and you're going to be using a little bit of a thicker line, you can go ahead and cut the tops off of these bottles. And another tip um, for cutting the tops off the bottles is if you're um, opening a uh, small little fast food restaurant and you're serving ketchup and mustard on hot dogs, it's gonna make it go a lot faster if you cut the tip off rather than using these smaller tips. So keep that in mind and don't be afraid just to cut them off. And um, it's gonna come in really helpful if you're doing volume and you're working faster. But for now, for today, we're gonna use these finer tips. So let's set these sauces aside and let's start putting some sauce on plates. And sauce not only enhances the appearance of our desserts, it's going to be enhancing the flavor as well. So have fun with your sauces and your flavors. You can add different flavors to pretty much all of these. The raspberry, you could add some blackberries, make it a blackberry. The apricot sauce that I have, you could add some nice vanilla to it, or you could even add a little amaretto. The vanilla sauce, we all know so many things you could do with that. I like to put a few, um, a few orange peels in mine and a little Grand Marnier, make a nice uh, vanilla Grand Marnier sauce. Chocolate, you can enhance it with Kahlua, many other liqueurs. You can also add some coconut extract, which is really nice for the summertime. And caramel, the same thing. A lot of extracts go really well with that, especially orange. And I also like to add some vanilla beans to my caramel. So um, be a little creative. You just don't have to stick with one flavor. Have lots of fun with your sauces. So let's talk about some plating of sauces. So one of the most common and really um, well-known, probably oldest method of putting sauce on the plate is by flooding it. And that's just by squeezing sauce on the plate. You can squeeze it in uh, a circle, around. You can um, squeeze it in almost like a rectangular shape or even kind of a sphere. And the sauce is pretty much gonna flood on the plate. So when doing that, you can enhance the flood by feathering it with another sauce on the inside. So we're gonna talk about doing that. So I'm just gonna flood this plate a little bit with some chocolate sauce, and then we're gonna do some feathering with a little bit of vanilla. You have to get the top off first, right? Okay. So 
we're just going to give it a good flood line. And before you actually start your feathering, give it just a minute to spread out a little bit. And if you're working in a kitchen and your plate ups are kind of simple, you'll be sure to dazzle everyone with these new presentations. So what we can do is we're going to put some dots on here with the vanilla sauce that I've made. And then we can easily feather the dots with a knife or a toothpick. I always like to use a small paring knife because especially when I'm working in a kitchen, it's a lot easier for me to relocate the small paring knife than it is for me to relocate a small toothpick. So keep that in mind. So by doing the feathering, you're just going to pull the knife kind of makes a heart shape. So it's a super pretty effect on the plate. And this really works well with a darker base and a lighter um, sauce applied on top, or you could do it the other way around. You could do like the vanilla sauce on the plate. It won't show up as much as this one. And like I said, you could do the vanilla sauce first and then the chocolate sauce and get the same effect. So this is super pretty, so easy to make, and you'll be sure to dazzle everyone with this one. Okay, so let's set this aside. And next, we're going to talk about a different method of flooding. And with this method of flooding, we're actually going to be doing some outlining on the plate with some chocolate. We're going to do the chocolate first, I'm going to set it aside to set up, and then we'll come back and flood it. So you just take some chocolate, some dark chocolate. I'm using some coating today. I recommend if you haven't done any tempering with chocolate to practice with some coating first. And um, it's going to set up really easy on you and you're not going to have to worry about the blooming from not being tempered properly. So I'm going to fill up my back and then we're going to um, do some lining on the plate with our chocolate coating. Okay. I'm going to cut off the end, just put this in a paper bag, and this is just a super beautiful effect. You're, you'll be sure to dazzle everyone if you try this. And you can do this in a variety of shapes and forms. And I'm just going to be piping some of my chocolate, and you want it to be thick enough where it's going to hold the sauce on the inside. And then we're going to be setting this aside so it can set up. And then we'll do the flood in a little bit. OK. So another technique that looks super pretty with desserts is the dots. You can dot around the plate. You can do small dots. You can do larger dots. And it's perfect for squeeze bottles. So you won't be ladling any sauces out. You're going to be using your squeeze bottles for a more defined effect. So let's do a little bit of dotting. And like I said, these dots, you can make them larger and then you can go smaller. It's a super pretty effect. And you can also do maybe the same size and kind of do them randomly. So definitely have fun with these sauces. Practice your techniques and you can use these techniques that I'm showing you today in your plate ups for your assignments. So that's a super cute effect. We just have some, um, a variety of dots that are almost the same sizes. And let's do just a little bit more dotting. Nice variety of color. Be sure to incorporate a little bit of color. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a larger dot, and then I'm just following around with smaller one on this one. So the dots are pretty fun, and they're easy to do. And with these stickier sauces like the caramel, 
be sure when you're releasing, you're going to squeeze the bottle, then you're going to stop squeezing, and then just lift it straight up. If you lift it off to the side, you're going to get kind of some little tails that are going to make your plate look a little sloppy. So I always try to go straight up, especially with the sticky things. And we have a question. The question is, how long will the sauces keep in the fridge? The caramel sauce and the chocolate sauce, they last for a very long time. You could keep them in the refrigerator for weeks. Just make sure if you're making your own to date your bottle and be sure to clean the tops. Remember we talked about that in the beginning? That's very instrumental in keeping your sauces fresh and free of any debris which can help spoil them sooner. And the fruit sauces aren't going to last quite as long. So you can usually keep them, I usually keep mine for about four or five days, but keep in mind too, those fruit sauces, they freeze really well. And you can put them in small containers, you can even put them in plastic cups and wrap them and then just thaw them when you need them. And the vanilla creme anglaise, always be mindful of the date on your cream and your eggs. And I usually keep mine for about three or four days. So these aren't something that you have to make fresh every day. You can pretty much make them for almost the week in the beginning of the week. But um, be sure that your bottles are clean and dry when you fill them because that's going to help preserve the sauce too because it won't be introduced to any water. So wash them out really good, run them to the dishwasher or wash, rinse, and sanitize them. Store them upside down to dry somewhere before you actually fill them. Okay, so now that we did the dots, let's move on to some streaking. And the streaking can be done by doing a spoonful of dessert of the sauce and then just kind of pulling the spoon across the plate, the plate for a streaking effect. So I'm just going to take some of my chocolate sauce and put it in a bowl. So something that you're not going to use the squeeze bottle for. And you're going to take, I um, like to use a larger spoon like a tablespoon. I'm going to be taking a spoonful of this sauce and I'm just going to puddle it on the plate and then I'm just going to streak it with the spoon. It's a nice effect. Kind of have to go over it twice and be sure to lift your spoon straight up rather than going off to the side and then you won't get any, um, any of the tails from the sauce. So another really fun thing that you can do with your sauces is you can brush the sauces on the plate. And the chocolate is one that looks super beautiful. Also raspberry does too. So just take your pastry brush from the toolkit. You're going to dip it in the chocolate. And this is a really nice effect on any plate. So you kind of want to get it on there pretty good. Like I said, especially with these chocolate sauces, be careful when you're moving them around on the plate. So if you just carefully brush the sauce, you get a super beautiful effect from the brush. And like I said, it looks best with chocolate. See, I've got a little dripping. It looks best with chocolate, but it also looks great with raspberry. So I'm going to be showing you just a few more things that you can do with your sauces. You can do some swirls and some squiggles, make some lines and do some crisscrosses. So you can kind of do almost like a grid effect with your sauces too, if you want to use two of them. So please have fun with your dessert sauces. You'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family with these. So this is something that's kind of pretty. It's a little bit of a grid effect. You're getting both colors in there. You can also just do some squiggly lines. And as you can see, these sauces are showing up really nice on the white plates, which I recommend. Then there aren't any distractions with the colors. And we'll do a little bit of caramel too. And you can just also do pretty much any design. I know a lot of people are already doing a lot of piping with buttercream. So you can kind of use some of your piping ideas too. So just have fun with your sauces, swirling them and zigzagging them on your plates. Okay, 
So now we're going to get back to the flooding. So now that our chocolate is set up, I've got this little chocolate decoration. You can make them larger, whatever size that you like. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to flood this. So you have to be careful not to put too much sauce in here. It's similar when you're flooding cookies when you're decorating them. So be a little bit careful. Make sure that your chocolate is well set. And what's nice too, if you're working in a restaurant, you can prepare these plates ahead of time. You can put a little plastic on them and you can stack them up if you, if you don't have room in the fridge. So even if you're doing this at home for a party, you can go ahead and make this plate ahead of time with the chocolate and then just do the flooding when you're ready to serve your dessert to your family and friends and they'll love it. They'll be completely impressed with you. So this is a really nice technique. It's a super beautiful effect. So I'm not putting too much in and I'm kind of using the small tip of the top of the bottle to kind of move it around to the edges. So it's a super beautiful effect. And please let me know if you have any questions on any of the plating. You can always send me an email. And in the weeks to come, we're going to be doing more plating so um, next week we're going to be doing um, one dessert plated four different ways for some ideas. And we have another question. Um, Dr. J, are the bottles you are using drip proof or retractable? Are the bottles that I'm using drip proof or retractable? And um, they're just regular squeeze bottles, so I don't think that they're either. And um, I haven't used them. But like I said, when you're squeezing, always remember to lift up rather than going to the side. And it'll be just a little bit of a neater effect for you. So now that we have some flooding done on our plate, we're going to go ahead and put a cute little dessert, and then we'll be finished with our plate up. So please let me know if you have any questions. Tune in the next two weeks. We're going to be doing some more dessert plate ups, and you'll get some ideas on how to enhance the plate ups for your assignments. And everyone's doing super great. With their assignments, you're doing a great job in the program. So, well done. <laughs> All right, so I've got a piece of flourless chocolate cake. And what's nice about these flourless chocolate cakes is um, they're pretty sturdy. You can move them around pretty easily. So you can put the cake just on the plate, or you can also cut a, um, a flat end, and you can even stand it up too. And it's a super nice effect for this dessert. So keep that in mind too. You can do this with cheesecake too. A lot of other cakes, as long as they're sturdy enough to hold up, hold their shape when they're standing up. And we're just going to put a little whipped cream here and a little off to the side. And we'll put a few berries. So everyone always loves raspberries. And how about if we incorporate just a few dots into this too? into our plate up. It was so easy and you'll be sure to dazzle your friends and family when you make this dessert. Let's do a few dots here. Maybe we'll do a little bit of raspberry too. And there we go. We have a super colorful plate that looks like it was just made for a guest, either at home or in a restaurant. So definitely apply these techniques. Let me know how you're doing and if you have any questions. And next we're going to be doing the drawing. Okay. So I've got all the names in the hat. I've for everyone that completed 10% in the program, you got a drawing into the hat. And you're going to be receiving $100 in store credit for the Escoffier online store. So be sure to brand yourself and your kitchen with Escoffier goods. So let me go ahead and pick our four lucky winners. And we're also going to be having a contest in July. So I want to tell you about that really quick before I pull the winners. 
So we're going to go back to our original contest concept where we did the um, assignments for every assignment that you complete. You're going to be getting an entry into the raffle and we are going to be raffling off an iPad mini tablet, which they're so nice. I have one myself. I can vouch for them. Super nice to work with. The screen is just big enough. And what I like about mine is I put it in my purse and it's no problem. I can't even feel it there. Sometimes I have to look for it actually because it's so small. They're so convenient. They're so powerful and you can work on your program on the iPad mini. So we're going to have a raffle for that and we're going to be doing it in the week after July because um, whatever assignments you submit in the month of July, you'll get entries into the raffle. And we're also going to be giving away your favorites, five Escoffier branded chef jackets with the Escoffier logo and your name on the jacket. So that's going to be for the top five winners. So um, bring in your assignments and it's going to get you closer to your goal of graduation. And we have the graduation date set for the beginning of August. So hopefully you'll make it. If not, if you're just starting or if you're in the middle, have fun with the contest and I'll be looking for your assignment. So back to the current contest. Let me pick the four names. Okay, so these are our lucky winners. I'm not going to look. They're all, everyone's in the hat. And our first winner is Ellen Burke Trent. Good job, Ellen. $100 credit for the Escoffier online store. So you've got three more to go, and I've got another one here. Okay, so our second winder, winner is Frida Jimenez. Yay, Frida, well done. You guys are doing great with your assignments and all of your progress, and we'll be looking for some more assignments next month. Got two more winners to go. Ah, we have Bonnie Christensen. Good job, Bonnie. And everyone did a terrific job. And we've got one more. And our final winner is Mae Thompson Lido. So congratulations to all of our winners. And we'll be sending your, you your information with your $100 credit for the Escafé online store. And don't forget about our current contest in the month of July for the tablet and the five Escoffier branded chef jackets. So we'll see you next week. We'll be doing a plate up of one dessert four different ways. So have a great 4th of July holiday and I'll see you then. Goodbye.